hello everybody, welcome to my back garden. Um, behind me is a shedding question and uh, although it might look quite nice and sunny out here with the wind, it's not very uh, very warm and I've got one of my neighbours doing some banging but that won't hurt. I shall be doing some of my own soon. <laughs> so uh, this is the shed repair. Um, I'm going to show you a bit of video from um, my last video, um, if it was my last video at the moment, and all up and down. But. So, I was hoping uh, to get this shed done, and it's um, nearly the end of April now, so there's been a bit of a delay um, from when I found it, but you've got to get the stuff in and whatever. So, I'm going to show you that first bit which showed you with the shed all full up and everything in it and what you could see of the damage. So I'm going to do a bit more film now um, of uh, what it's like now. And I'll also show you the uh, materials I've bought to do the job, hopefully. All right, everybody? So um, let's get on with this job. Here we are out in my uh, back garden uh, with a nice view of the water butt and this is the shed in uh, question and as you can see it's that type of construction so um, grooved timber um, and then interlocked at the corners and it, you know it was a, I think it was about £500 when we bought it quite a few years ago now quite a few years ago so if I uh, pan down a bit you can see um, I hope that this has all collapsed down here and these have all been broken apart and if I go around the end where the ladder is um, you can see I hope it's actually uh, come apart completely and also uh, part of the capping up there is gone which I find a bit strange so inside is my bike um, I had to bring it forward because the shelf that was over the top would actually come down on top of the bike, which isn't ideal. Uh, and if you notice, there's a fridge there under that worktop. Uh, used to go under and, and you know slide under and come out, and now it's rock solid with the worktop on it. So it proves that things have, have certainly moved. Now, luckily, I don't think much weather comes in here because I've got the fence in the way at the back. But uh, yeah, not great and what i thought i'd better do is i better just try and hold it up so i had this piece of um top um and i've just wedged that down there for the time being and taken a lot of the stuff off the shelves so what i'm planning on doing and you won't probably see the inside at the end there because everything's in the way but i'm going to take all the shelves out here and probably take the work so and strip it all off take all my balls off and then I'm hoping to get some timber just to jack this up a bit and force it up. And then I'm just going to use some ply. And I will explain my thinking about that when I actually do the video on, on so trying to repair So here's the ply um, that was delivered from a local supplier just down the road. Very good. Um, and he cut it up for me. And uh, the sheet you're looking at, the front sheet, this is, this is actually marine ply. Um, really good stuff and actually twice the price of the, the two bits of pie behind it which is the Chinese equivalent which is only about um, 32 quid so yeah so but the marine pie is going outside because it's less very less likely to delaminate being marine pie so that's what I've got and behind are the rips which I'll show you when we go into the shed so this is my understairs cupboard and in here at the moment I have um, a big pot of uh, magnolia which I'm going to probably redo the inside with and the uh, other tubs on top are exterior um, fencing paint basically but they're in blue which is obviously my shed is blue I've had trouble getting blue so B&Q were doing these so I went down there and got some and on the very top of these tubs are some screws I bought from the supplier of the ply because um, I'm going to need quite a few I think so we're now going to go out into the shed hopefully cheers everybody 
So here are these um, offcuts. Uh, we've got about five from each sheet, so and they're eight foot long. So hopefully that's going to be well ample long enough. And if I just uh, go up, I've still got my bike in here, which when I do the work, I'll just get out and put in the garden because I've got nowhere else to put it at the moment. But as you can see, I've really um, emptied this out. I've still got a few struts and everything to remove, but I don't want to take them off until I'm ready to do the work because I feel it might all drop down a bit more. So, as you can see. Um, these are my um, little tables that I'll probably use to cut up on. Fairly simple. They're not particularly solid, but I don't think I need it too solid. And I've got my steps if I need them. Uh, these are what was left over from the the fridge and the freezer that were under the worktop, which um, have gone down to the tip. You'll be pleased to know because they were really, really old. But I, I might be able to use these as storage. <laughs> but they might end up in the tip, so we'll see. So quite pleased how it's how empty I've got it, and I've still got this prop up here that I showed you, and. Uh, this was actually a, um, an umbrella, <laughs> big umbrella, for a table that I no longer have. So I cut the umbrella bit off and took that down the tip and just kept that as a bit of a strut. But I am hoping to borrow an acro, a proper acro, from one of my neighbours, which is very kind of them. Glad they've got one. So I think that's about finished in here. I'll show you outside. I'll just show you down there a bit because when I was doing the works that bit actually completely fell out and came out and what you can see through the gap are some paving slabs that I put there just to sort of stop the weather a bit. So if you remember in that bit of video it was all rather full down here and I've now emptied it all out I cut the bit of the hedge down at the end that was stopping me and this is all ready so I can get down there to uh, do my works. So you might be wondering where all the stuff from the big shed went. Well a good bit of it ended up in this one which is now a bit full but I managed to send a lot of the stuff that was in here that I never used down the tip um, which was a good lesson I learned from doing the fiddle yard uh, and also the um, the move up into the loft and as you can see it is pretty full but once I get the other shed going it'll, I can get it back <laughs> an operational what's the name and I did actually go down the tip four times in all um, two for stuff from both sheds and uh, twice for the fridge because I couldn't get each I couldn't get two in at once so I'm quite happy that uh, we're ready and there's some of my tools ready to go so I've uh, for this bit I've sort of moved down to the uh, the lower patio by the house uh, might get away from the banging a bit um, but you know works have to be done don't they and it, Hey, down here it's lovely it's the winds stopped by the vegetation and uh, the sun's blaring down and it's absolutely really nice here now this is um uh, this is the 23rd of april so friday the 23rd of april um this morning has been taken up with waiting for a delivery um for something on the railway and uh, sorting out some other bits and pieces um on the other computer um so I'm not going to start today, I'm going to start hopefully tomorrow after I've done the shopping and uh, I'll film as I go along and uh, but I'm going to do this all as one big video uh, I'm not going to do it in, in sections so I'll just film bits of what I'm doing um, so I hope you'll be interested, I know it's not trains uh, I might slip a bit of a train in between <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's um, it's still important, isn't it? You still need your sheds to, to things, especially with a bike in it, you know. You've got to keep the bike somewhere and that's the best place for it. Did find it very easy getting the bike back in, in and out after I took everything out, so it'll be good. So we'll see. And I haven't I don't think I'm gonna put back everything that I had in there, you know, all the shelves and everything. I'm just gonna um, play it by ear really and see how we get on. So anyway, I hope you'll enjoy the uh, the construction part. I mean I might do some fast forward bits and see how we go. So see you at the end hopefully. Okay. Well, 
Well hello everybody, um, so this is the start of the repair um, and it's the 24th, Saturday the 24th of uh, April, uh, lovely day outside, I'll show you in a minute. So you can see I've got all the boards out at the bottom that were all um, concertinaed, um, I've had to put a little bit down there, the blue bit to hold it because it was dropping. <laughs> And here's my neighbour's uh, acro. Now I can't actually get it low enough to go vertical, but it is doing the job. So, and it's a bit out of the way. So, the first job is basically to try and force all these boards up so that the joints are together. Uh, I'm hoping I can do that. And then I'm going to use the 70 mil offcuts of uh, ply uh, and cut them, in essence, in between here and there to, to keep it spaced apart and then once I've got those all the way along I'll then put the cheap china ply down here screwing into this and screwing into that and then once I've got all that on I'll then screw the same on the other, on the outside with the marine ply now I'll only put a few screws hopefully on the outside of the marine ply just to hold it in place and then I'll screw right through the whole lot and make a sandwich of it basically so I'm now going to uh, switch off and I will just show you outside my setup so bear with me as I walk nice and slowly for you I've, I've, I've um, rolled back the carpet a bit there and there's all my drills and uh, drill batteries and chargers ready so as you can see my patio and here's my garden and the sun shines out so here's my workbench with those bits of ply I'm going to use. Bikes over there, um, my tripods over there as well. They're the bits that I've just pulled out, um, which I'm going to use um, probably to do the barge board at the back. If you remember, it was not there, was it? Um, and here's my tools out. Uh, need, you never know quite what you're going to need. And here's my screws and everything. And I did find my jigsaw, believe it or not. Whether it's going to work, I don't know, but I've got it. So, sign off now and I'll see you a bit later when I've got some work done. Oh, and I've also got a delivery from Hornby today, which was meant to come Monday, but it's coming today. So, I'll probably have lunch while I'm waiting for that. Luckily, it's uh, DPD, so it's only an hour's wait. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Hello. Hello, everybody. So, uh, a few hours, well, about an hour's gone, I think. Uh, so, I've got a new bit of timber cut in there, and I've tried to close these up as much as I can um, but the problem I'm having I think is that because the acro is at an angle and I can't get it any lower I've tried banging it down make it so I can get it vertical which is what you're meant to do um, it's pushing the shed over to one side <laughs> so I've now put that in there and I'm going to take the acro out and hopefully it should settle down on that bit of timber and then I'm going to screw all the slats as I push them up. I'm going to just uh, put some screws in and see if we can hold it together. But as you can see, it's very bent at the bottom here. Um, so we'll have to see. I'll probably have to pull a cramp on that. We'll see how we go. So I'll see you later on. So everybody, you join me again with uh, a bit of wood with a lot of screws in it, as you can see. Um, so I've cut a corner piece that is the right height now as far as I'm concerned so it goes all the way down there and is sitting on the bottom frame of the shed where the original piece was uh, although it's in a bit better state this bit and I'm gradually working my way up as you can see so I drill holes as you can see um, for my screws and then as I work my way up I just bang this board up with a block and a hammer and the same here if it needs it and then put the screws in and working my way up and then eventually I'll have a I'll know what gap to put a piece of uh, the ply in there and that will then hold that solid hopefully uh, because I will screw it through into this bit of timber and then I can then sort out the other end so what I've done the other end if we go slowly and I've taken all of these out um, but just left the bottom ones in for the time being and what I've done here I've taken the acro from that side which was forcing the shed over like that and I've now put it here 
taken the brace out that uh, is now sitting there <laughs> and if we look now we can see that that is now more in line with the side of the base um, so it's working out very well I'm quite pleased with how it's all working out so I'm now going to go and wait for my delivery from Hornby um, and while I'm waiting I'll have some lunch um, and I've also got my drill batteries on charge there because um, it seems to make sense what I'm going to do is go and get my other little drill um, because I've been using two bits um, to, to make the hole go right through the piece of wood and it's a bit of a pain keeps swapping over and what was really good this these screws I got from the um, the local de, um, builders merchants they actually had a bit in you know a, a, a posi drive new bit which I'm uh, using in this so that's really good isn't it they might be a little bit more expensive but yeah you get a, a new bit that fits those screws so great so I'll see you later on um, hopefully when I've got a delivery from Hornby all right everybody cheers well hello everybody uh, what's this got to do with a shed not a lot really <laughs> but I'm very pleased to say that uh, DBD delivered this parcels from Hornby for my one of my next projects um, five minutes after the first you know the, the the hour that you're given so I thank them for that and you might wonder what the battery is doing on top of that box um, it's the battery from my microphone to this uh, video camera which apparently ran out and I didn't realize so I'm probably gonna have to do some dubbing on the first bits of film that I filmed not realizing it wasn't working we'll see so I'm pretty pleased actually it's now 20 past 12 um, and um, on the 24th Saturday the 24th and uh, I can now get back to uh, doing what I was doing before I came out um, which was putting a lot of screws in now I'll, I'll, I'll refrain from using the uh, the expression I better get back um, but uh, yeah so I'll uh, catch up with you later on when I've got a few more of those screws in, I think. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. So I just thought I'd show you this bit. Um, all this corner had completely dropped down. Um, so, in other words, it was all out of that groove and whatever. So I've, I've built it up. As you see, I've used some bits of wood that I've taken off. To, to, I've got it up to that level there. And I now want to bring this up um, to meet it. Um, and if I go outside, I'll uh, I'll show you uh, why I need to do that. Um, and I've, I've used some of these old bits just to hold all that together for the time being, because I don't want that all dropping off again. So we'll go outside. Hello, pussy cat. And if you know. If you notice the whole of the bottom rail of this uh, window frame has dropped away so that all needs to go back up with a glass in it thing luckily the glass is still just about in it so I'm hoping I can get away with this so wish me luck and we'll carry on so here we are uh, ladies and gentlemen um, so I've cut me full length piece of timber in like I did over there and I'm in the process of screwing down, as you can see, and, and closing them up. Um, this piece of timber here is 20 mil shorter than the one over there, but I'm not going to be greedy. <laughs> I'm not too worried if it's a little bit out of uh, level at the top, because um, the ply at the bottom will take it all up. So I've uh, brought you here because I want to show you um, this bit. Um, I'll go outside. So I was trying to pull all this up to sort of start putting it in. And what I found was, unfortunately, this piece of timber here used to go right across there as one width, yeah? And it was coming up and hitting this window frame before it would meet this bit here. <laughs> so I've actually had to, um, I've actually had to cut a bit out of there, like so, in situ. Um, so hopefully let it all come up and join so we'll have to see won't we um, so, so I'm 
I thought I'd show you this before I pull it up because you don't really appreciate it when it's all back together again, do you? But it's going very well. I'm very pleased. So uh, get a bit more. If I can get this all screwed up before I finish this, this afternoon, I'll be happy. So cheers, everybody. See you later. On. Everybody, welcome to the second day. So it's uh, Sunday, the uh, 25th today. Blimey! Uh, only got five days to go before. I, well, six days ago before I go and get my second jab uh, next Saturday in Ipswich. So as you can see, I'm all set up again um, out here anyway. And uh, we'll just uh, pop into the, uh, the shed and show you where I got to last night. So uh, you remember this bit, I'm sure. So I apologise for not uh, filming this last night, but I was really tired, wanting to eat food, and my next door neighbour wanted me to get him fish again. So I wanted to go and get that. So not much changed, the sun's in a different position. So I've screwed all this lot up here which I was in the process of doing, I think, uh, when you last saw it. I've got all this reinstated here. Yes, I know there's gaps and that, it's a shrimmy shed. As long as it's, uh, it's functional, I don't mind. I can always beautify it later, can't I? But I've also had to do all up here. Um, and uh, I've got a gap at the bottom, which I'm not sure you'll be able to see, but it's about an inch gap at the bottom, but I'm just going to cover that with some of the old boards that have come out. That'll be all right on the outside. I might even do it inside as well. So, what's the job today? Uh, I dearly love um, to get my struts in along here, my upright struts, and if I could get the inside ply on and screwed, I'd be happy, I think, uh, to make it sort of secure. Um, just as a matter of interest, uh, oh dear, uh, that's all I've got left of a box of 200 screws. <laughs> so I put quite a few in, I reckon. Anyway, I'm going to turn off now and uh, just give you a last view of the, uh, the garden. And the sun's trying to get out, uh, it keeps coming in and out. Um, it's a little bit nippy, but uh, I'm still in my shirt sleeve, so it can't be too bad, can it, you know? Uh, I am aching a lot today. I've taken a couple of tablets to sort of ease it a bit, but yeah, my back's uh, saying, you don't like it, you don't like it. But never mind, never mind. So welcome back. And yes, I know there's not an awful lot to see. Um, it's about half past nine in the morning now. Um, so I've done a bit of work, so I'll show you from outside because you'll see more of what I've done. Uh, still got the acro, although technically speaking I think I could probably take this out. Um, and I've done some work down there. And I've done some work down there. So we'll go outside and have a look. So this corner here I've uh, just put to, this is um, the uh, the marine ply I've used here um, because the end here technically will be seen um, and be coated although I may still run a piece of uh, ply around the end there to strengthen it I'll see uh, I'm not sure about that so basically it's just wedged in really as tight as I can get it and then just screwed into the batten that's behind it and this is the opposite corner um, so fairly fairly straightforward, just notched it under and I've taken it flush with the boards and that's the gap I've got from moving up those boards but I'll cover that, that's fine and again this is uh, resin bonded uh, well the, the marine ply so now we go into this corner um, now, I must admit, I was thinking it's going to be quite easy to do, and what I originally did, um, it just shows you we don't always get quite right, I cut that piece in there, 
and we're just going to have that held there and then time to blow. But I suddenly realised that this this baton here is actually behind these boards. So in other words, these boards used to go down and go under here and be screwed through there, which you tend to forget. So my idea isn't work. What would happen is that would go there at an angle and you'd have to apply an angle on the outside and the inside, which I don't think is going to work. So I've since taken that bit out. I mean, it was loose. Um, and I fix these two bits there and there, which they work okay. Uh, sorry about the funny angles, I'm just <laughs> leaning on the floor. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm probably going to have to at some stage put a piece of this all the way along there so that my marine ply can go straight down there. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Uh, so I will put a middle piece in here, I think. In fact, it might be worth putting a middle piece there, there, and there, where I've got a bit sticking out from the main uh, base. So we'll see how we go. So I'll be back later on. Cheers. So welcome back again. Um, well, it's just coming up to 10, so it's time for my tea break. So I'm going to go in. Um, and I've got this bit here. Uh, I've decided not to do any more in there. I don't think it really needs it. Um, what I'm finding was that this was bowed right in, so I've had to put a big screw in there. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but a big screw in there um, up to try and keep it level. Obviously when it's all trapped with a ply it'd be fine, uh, but at the moment it didn't work. <laughs> if we go inside, in here over this length, uh, I've decided to put um, three uprights in. So just got to mark the centre about. And what I've done is I've just taken out the tongue um, and flattened it down, which I will do the same with uh, that one there and this one here. And then I shall cut those in tight. And they might just sit there loose until I put the ply on. Um, I'll have to see. We'll see how we go. So off to my tea now. So uh, I'll see you later on. Bye. So welcome back, um, and I'm basically ready now to try and put the ply on the inside. Uh, so I've, uh, I've swept all the uh, muck away from down here. It'll be interesting to see how flat the actual floor is, I don't quite know. If there's a bit of a gap, I won't be too bothered, I don't think. And as you can see, I've got my struts in there. Uh, and if you remember, I cut out the bottom bits to get all the, uh, the groove out of the way, or the tongue out of the way. Um, and the way I get these in, um, measure it with a, with a steel wall and then put it in at the top um, with that black cramp that I'm now using for something else. And then with this bit of stick, just put that underneath and then force it up and then give it a tap with a hammer. Once you then get that on there a little bit, you can then use that cramp again to cramp it all in. And there's nothing actually holding this, it's all loose. Now, I'm sure you can see that this is all bent. So I'm hoping when I get my ply in, it will all flatten it all out. Uh, should do. The ply is going to come up quite a long way. I mean, I've got 425 uh, width of ply. So hopefully it'll be quite a way up here. Um, I might put some more screws in this bottom one on the outside um, uh, before I put the outside ply on. So there we go. And if you're wondering what the, the two the bits of wood there with a cramp on it, that's my pinch rod to get the, uh, the length. Now, I uh, only really want to cut this once. And then what I've found is that it's, it's wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So I've done this pinch rod to the top size. And if there's a slight gap, I don't think it's going to worry. So uh, I'll be back with you later on when I've maybe got this bit fitted in. All right, everybody? Cheers. I just thought I'd uh, I'll show you the label on the back of this. Now this is the um, the Chinese uh, ply, um, and as I say, it's half the price of a marine ply. So if I remember, I'll uh, try and show you the uh, uh, I'll try and show you the label on uh, the marine ply. So cheers, everybody. Uh, so, welcome back everybody. It's about a quarter past twelve now, um, on the Sunday still, <laughs> you'll be pleased enough, the 25th. Uh, so I think it's about time for me lunch. So as you can see, I've got this in now. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'll put some more screws in or not. Um, 
I'll probably put a few more in at that end actually I've just noticed so yeah put a few more up there uh, so yeah it's pretty good it's, it's gone up so I'll go on the other side and you can see um, it's fairly straight and pulled up so I think you can uh, I think you can see here that uh, you know this is all up fairly tight um, I don't know about upside down I'm not gonna <laughs> look on there but it's yeah it looks okay um, and it's going to be all right for when I put my uh, my other skin on on the outside. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit of a gap there. Look, but uh, I don't think that's going to hurt. And of course, when I put double screws right through the lot, uh, it may well pinch it even more. So sorry about the funny angles, but it's uh, there's not an awful lot of room uh, between the shed and the wall and the uh, fence. <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm fairly happy with this, um, so let's go back inside. So I think I'll put these screws in before I go and have lunch, and then this afternoon I'll get this bit fitted in. And then I think I'm going to call it a day, uh, until I, uh, you know, and then I can do the outside maybe tomorrow, um, see how we go. Uh, I did actually just take a, a bevel off of here, just to make it a little bit, I haven't actually sanded it, I just run my plane along it but uh, just to make it a bit uh, safer really, uh, you don't get splinters off it. So, uh, still a bit of a mess in here with my tools, but you know, you need them, don't you? So I put some more, uh, I put my batteries back on charge uh, while I have my lunch. And as you can see, it's not such a nice day today, um, but uh, it's all right, it's, it's not, I'm not cold, I've still got my shirt sleeves on, so it can't be too bad, can it? Cheers, see you after later on. Well, welcome back everybody, uh, not much has been done, I did manage to get those screws in down now as I told you didn't I? Um, So I've had my lunch, I've got my second cup of tea here, which I'm finishing off because I wanted to get back out here And if I can give um, maybe our younger viewers one bit of advice, it is this Whatever job you do, always try and eat So have a breakfast, try and have a lunch and obviously an evening meal um, and even a nibble later on if you need it because if you don't you probably might end up with uh, uh, stomach ulcers and all other things and the other thing it does it gives you an energy boost so I was really feeling tired before I had my lunch which was um, a nice uh, ham sandwich with some uh, Bavarian style um, ham uh, which I have every day which probably isn't that healthy but whatever and um, salad and, and whatever with it and bits of cake as well which probably isn't any healthy but yeah i'm not doing too bad so yeah if i can give anybody a bit of advice that's what i would say because uh, i think in the end you know you're gonna gain with your health as you get older all right everybody cheers so i'm gonna get back on and get this cut in now i think and i'll come back to you when i've done it so welcome back everybody so i've nearly finished for the day now um it's about a quarter to two, uh, but I've got things to do. I want to make a casserole for dinner tonight, so I've got to do that, get it in the oven. So, as you can see, I've got my inside ply here. Um, but, uh, if you remember, I mentioned outside about this button um, being at the back of the panel. So what I've done here is I've, um, I've just dropped this panel down onto that bit of uh, softwood in the, uh, from the frame, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that lot like a skirt in um, and that will tie it together I've taken an arrow off the top edge again and uh, I think that will neaten it up um, and make the carpet even uh, smaller <laughs> but never mind, I'm sure we can cut a bit of carpet eventually um, so I go outside so as you can see I, I've screwed this side as well and here obviously there's nothing to fix into which is why I'm going to put that bit of skirt in along inside um, when I put maybe a bit of timber along here to pack this out, then I might be able to get a screw in there as well. So we'll see, just to make it as strong as possible. Um, but while we're out here, I'll just show you. Um, when I was doing all that work yesterday, the whole of this shed would rock from one side to the other. <laughs> and that way as well. And as, we, as I hope you can see, it's pretty solid now. So I'm quite pleased with that. I'm quite pleased indeed. So there we are, I mean, a bit of skirting's on. Um, 
which has certainly helped and it helps screw nicely. Got me a bit of carpet but obviously it's overlapping here because I've got that skirting in. And I'm tidying up. I've got all my batteries on charge while I tidy up. Uh, I do still like to tidy up a little bit. <laughs> Doesn't have to be too good out here, does it? But uh, Right, that's the offcut of that inside board. So that's the Chinese uh, recorder. That might be destined to be used up in the loft. If you remember, I had a delivery from Hornby, didn't I? So that might be uh, used for what bits came from Hornby, possibly. Or what bits I already had. So uh, I think we're near enough finished here now. Um, and this bit standing up here, look. What I'm planning to do, um, probably near the end, is I'm going to cut those uh, from, the, from the top of this bit, take them up to there, and then screw through with the screws like I've done on the corners. Um, with the, you know, with the screws that I've done in the corners, um, because I think it's all going to tie it together and stop it all shrinking away and dropping. So I'm hoping it won't do now. Um, and if I've got enough, I might obviously do it that end, I'll definitely do it this end, um, and maybe there. Um, so the only real corner I haven't got a proper corner done yet is over there, which is ooh, really dark. Um, so I will be putting some screws in there uh, before I finish, I think, and maybe trying to slide up though, that gap. Um, and maybe these as well, I'm not quite sure yet, we'll see how we go. Um, one, job a, one job at a time, I think. So uh, I'm signing off for today, um, so this is uh, Sunday the 25th, and we'll see how we get on tomorrow. Hoping the weather's going to be alright, I think it is going to be alright, so pretty good. I've been very lucky with the weather, and look the sun's come out, well almost come out again. So I'm just going to get me bike in here and uh, those bits of wood, and uh, go and get on with my casserole. Right, everybody, and it's just coming up to two o'clock, so I've done a reasonable day's work today, I think. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Oh, it's my uh, my casserole that I did. Um. There's beef, uh, carrots, parsnips, onion, mushrooms, um, yeah, quite a nice mixture. Gravy granules, some hot water, and in the oven for about two and a half hours, three. And I just cover it with uh, the foil, kitchen foil. And this will do me three dinners. Um, I keep it in the fridge after it's cooled down. So, hope you like that. It's smelling lovely. Sorry you can't smell it, but never mind. Can't be helped, can it? Hey. Well hello everybody. Welcome to Robert's train set for day three. Um so this is now Monday the twenty uh, sixth of uh, April. So as you can tell all these things are out of kilter, but uh, whatever. Um quite cold this morning, uh hence the woolly. Um I always wear the gloves. So I uh, just came out um, 20 to 8, so too bad. Um, I hope you can't really start amming them and banging them too early in the morning, can you? So I just need to clear all the stuff out, get all my, all my stuff set out, and uh, looking at the weather forecast for the next few days, it looks, it appears, although it doesn't very often always happen, <laughs> that we might have rain on Wednesday and most of Thursday, Wednesday night into Thursday. So I think the course of action now is to get the outside ply on um, and then today get that out on and then any other bits that I can do inside um, and then I think tomorrow I think I better get the uh, the blue um, protection on um, at least get a coat on it I suppose it's got to help hasn't it and then see how we go obviously if it's raining I'm not going to be able to do much am I so but I may be able to do stuff inside but then all you know, you, everything's wet and it's horrible. I don't want to work in that. So I'll get back to you later on. All right, everybody? So cheers. Hope you're all well. And uh, I hope the sun comes out. Um, it's getting blue over there. So 
Maybe. We'll see. <coughs> Ta da. Welcome back, everybody. Well, I've not done an awful lot. I uh, got this bit of board out from the conservatory, and I said I'd show you the, um, the label on uh, the marine ply. So here it is. And as you can see on this one, it's not a sticky label, it's actually printed onto the board. <laughs> and the line that you see is how much I need to cut off. Um, so we'll go around the back of the, uh, the shed and I'll explain um, my thoughts a bit. So here we are, and as you can see, when I first uh, did this shed, um, I put this piece of um, plinth at the bottom to hide the uh, wood that the shed is sitting on. It's also sitting on a big concrete base, so it does help. It's probably why it keeps it fairly flat inside. Um, and then what I did is I put a little bead over there. Um, and sort of pinned down because as you can see there's a groove in this board it was some tongue and groove from I think the bathroom actually I'm not quite sure from somewhere um, and then I put a, a mastic seal down here and sealed it all up and it's lasted quite well it's gone a bit down that end which it seemed to have got more water down there than anywhere that's where as you can see you know the woods rotted away a bit there um, so what I'm planning on doing is sitting my bit of ply, marine ply, on top of this and it will overlap it so that will make a nice seal um, and it gives me somewhere to sit it on. So let's move down this end a bit. And basically I've got the same problem at each end. So if I set, this is the offcut from um, the inside but obviously it's the same height so that's how it's going to go. Now do I cut this away to allow that to go right through or do I cut that away and leave this intact? Um, and if I show you the other end, and I must admit I'm pleased I've got this uh, garden needler, the garden. <laughs> it's helping my knees no end. Uh, so I've got the right old pickle trying to uh, film this. I've tried it from the other side and it doesn't work. So as you can see I'm sitting a bit of timber on there and this end is even more isn't it so would I be happy cutting all these off um, I don't think I would actually because it then releases all this lot doesn't it so I'm going to notch it over this uh, or under it whichever and whatever. And that's why I've marked the big board uh, ready to be cut because I was originally thinking of cutting it off after I fitted it but I think that would be impractical with all these bits in the way you know um, as you can see and the other thing I've done is I've gone along and uh, <coughs> I've drilled some holes. So I've got a hole down there ready right through and a hole here ready right through to get a screw in. But I will obviously put a screw on the outside first, otherwise it'll just fall off, won't it? So I'm going to go away now and cut that and play around with the notches. And uh, I'll t you can see me back when I've hopefully got it fitted in. So here we are back at about half nine it is now, getting on for tea tea time so I'm looking forward to I must admit so I've got this on um, I've had to put more screws on the outside than I was hoping um, and I'm still slightly disappointed that this bit here hasn't gone up really really tight to the uh, softwood um, so I think at some stage after I've coated it I think um, another bead of uh, mastic of some sort will go down there um, and I'm overlapping a bit this end, but I'm not too bothered about this end. Um, I might put a little cover piece at a later date. So if we walk along... Uh, now these bits of wood here, I had an enormous amount of trouble trying to get this to sit in. Um, don't quite, I, think, I think the reason was, and you do need to be careful when you're moving around, <laughs> um, if I take you down, I don't know how well you're going to see this, but if I show you um, down there, and I don't think you're going to see it, but it it didn't quite sit on this bit of wood that I thought it would, the bit of plinth at the bottom. It's fine up the other end, but this end it doesn't, so I'm suspecting there's a big round in this bit of plinth. Um, but it doesn't matter, but it has come up about right there. Uh, but in the process of trying to fit it, I managed to break that bit off, that bit there. So I put a big screw up up there.
just to hold it on. It won't hurt. It's only really um, cosmetic, isn't it? And I'm going to try eventually to get some bits in where they're missing and glue them in. So we'll see. Fitted, um, it's just a case of doing this bit now. Um, and if you're wondering how I um, marked it out, um, for the length I took a pinch rod between between that bit and that bit up there um, and then with the bit of off cut I then sat it on the bottom bit and just marked where the bottom of these were and then worked accordingly so it worked quite well and I shall do the same on this bit so we'll just go inside so as you can see I've not abated using as many screws as I possibly possibly can <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm happy with this um, I might put some screws in the middle but obviously from this side to the other side you don't quite know where you're going and this the top of this board is quite a bit higher than the board outside because it's obviously got the thickness of the the base uh, but it's all going and it's all nice and solid that's what I want so I'm now going to get on with um, preparing the other bit and uh, I'll see you probably after tea I would imagine so cheers everybody cheers oh and uh, I do have one empty box of screws, they're the, uh, the 45 mil, so I've started the second box of those. So I've only got 200 left, oh dear. Oh, welcome back everybody, I've had my tea, I uh, really enjoyed that, sit down as well. I must admit it's a lot colder today, I've still got my woolly on, uh, and it's 10 after 10 o'clock, and my feet were getting cold, so it's nice to have a sit down. So, as you can see, I've put a, um, a piece down here. As I said, I thought I would have to. What I find interesting is these two bits. This is a Chinese uh, ply, and this is the marine ply. Ostensibly, they're both 18 mil. Yeah, look, there's a quite a bit of a step there. Which isn't very good, is it? But there we are. So I've got a. I have a thought here. Um, do I rest the ply on the little bits that are sticking out at the bottom there? Or do I cut those off and take it to the line of the other ply? So I have decided to cut these off. And the little bit of stick you see there and there, when I've cut them to the right length, they will be what I shall sit the um, ply on, so to speak. So need to get on and get this done. And one other interesting point, well, to me at least, is when I was doing the works on this, this door would not shut. I mean, I do have troubles with it anyway, with things sh uh, shrinking and swelling and, and whatever. So it's not always perfect, but it wouldn't, literally wouldn't shut. So what I ended up doing is releasing all these screws at the top and releasing all the screws at the bottom. In fact, at the top, Oops, sorry about it. At the top, I, I took most of them out, just left one in and really loose. And at the bottom, I released all these ones. But as you can see now, I've done them all up, put some new screws in that one. And wonders of wonders, it actually shuts and opens. So it just shows you how out of um, square this shed was with all the problems of it, you know. So anyway, I'll, uh, I'm rambling on. We'll, we'll get on and get this work done. All right, everybody? But yeah, it's really cold, and if I show you the weather, <laughs> is it going to rain? I, there isn't any rain in the forecast today. As I said, it's, it's for Wednesday uh, night and into Thursday, but we'll see. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Uh, well, welcome back, everybody. The sun's decided to come out. It's very nice, having done all my work. Uh, well, not all of it, but uh, so as you can see, uh, we now have a fitted piece along here. Uh, and I thought, as I had this gap, I thought I'd use some of the stuff that came out to um, make a repair. Uh, now, if you're wondering why it's cream, it's because I've turned them around the other side. Because they are literally so curved, which I hope you can see if I get out the light. Um, that if I'd have put them the other way, I think, uh, you know, they've been all over the place. So if I show you the bit they came out of, so bearing in mind I've um, cut those three pieces off the end of this, if I put it on there and then rock it, 
make a good propeller, wouldn't it, eh? Shows you um, the forces involved when things warp. So I suspect this is a bit that fell out first. <laughs> we'll see. So I think, um, yes, it looks a mess in here, obviously, but basically the shed now is in one piece and can be used. Okay. Uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm fairly happy. I've not done it neat and really tidy. I just, I just wanted the shed to be okay and stand up another. Well, you know, however long I'm going to be here for. The never-ending question: When? <laughs> um, so I'm going to spend the rest of the day in here and put those buttons that I showed you the other day up here, and just, just to do a few bits like that. Um, and I'll. I'll give you a brief look um, at the end of the day, what I've done. And then basically it's going to be painting. So I don't think I need a video painting, do I? So um, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll just do a little bit of a video at the end when I've near, you know, when I've sort of finished most of it. Although there might still be shelves and things like that to be done. But I'm, I am happy. Um, you know, I've got a, I've got a shed that is... Um, secure, not going to fall down, and it's again fairly nice and solid like it was when I first built it, so it's great. So uh, I'll give you a last view of the, uh, of the garden, and the sun's gone in again, and I'm about to go and have my lunch, quarter past twelve it is, so uh, and it has been quite cold today compared to the last couple of days, so uh, I need to push on because that rain's coming, possibly, we'll see. Bye everybody, bye. Well, hello everybody, we're, we're back. Um, it's um, just coming up to five o'clock, uh, still on the, uh, the 26, uh, and I'm quite happy with what I've got, so I cleared the garden. There's a, there's a few bits of wood growing out of it, but that'll be fine. And the poor little ladder and all the offcuts um, are over there. Uh, but not all of them, because if I swing round, I've utilised some of them to repair these slots, so I've, I've actually turned these back to front, so the, what was inside is now outside, which is probably why. And you notice something? They're blue, or oh, going blue. Yes, I've started painting a bit. Um, such a nice day now, although it's still, you know, it's still cold enough for me to have my woolly on and not be overly hot, but uh, whatever. So let's go in here. You know, the bike's back in its place. So I think once I get myself sorted, um, the first thing to sort out, I think, is where the bike goes, because it was always a bit of a, um, you know, fit it in where I could. Um, now, ideally, I'd love it to go down here, um, but I think it's just that too big, because it would make it so easy to in and out, wouldn't it? But uh, I don't think it's going to work. And uh, also it was a compromise under that worktop that I had. Um, so I can now raise that worktop up. I think I will put the worktop back in because it was quite useful. So as you can see, we're, um, we're all stacked up here. All my batteries and that, I've just had them on charge. I, I forgot them last night and left them on until I thought about it and then came out. Not all night, otherwise I might not have had a shed left, might I? So it just shows you as you get tired, I think. So. I've tidied this corner up here and put all them screws in like I did the other side. They didn't come up quite as well as the other side, but they're not too bad. I've also tidied this up and got the gap down there uh, along with that one there. So I'm happy with that. Uh, I managed to bang these up. I've broken off screws and God knows what else. But I didn't curse much and then I've actually fixed these all down here. I didn't actually do this side, um, but it's held with this, this bit of board. So as you can see, I've got two bits of slat down there and down there, each side of the window. And then I've done one there, one in the middle, and one there. I didn't bother cutting all the bevels. I don't think it's worth it. I haven't done any on this one because for the simple reason I don't really want to have to cut the worktop around it. I know the worktop is already cut for these buttons at each end. So I think I'll get my worktop in and then put those in afterwards, you know, un underneath and then put the top up and we'll see how we go. So that's about it in here. Had a bit of a sweep up, all into that pile down there. 
Uh, still got to cut the carpet, but uh, I was going to do that today, but I've done other things, so I'm quite pleased. Um, so yeah, it's good in here. So let's go outside and I'll show you around the end. Um, or not even the end, actually. Right, so I've shut the door. Um, it's not locked up yet. And I had this big gap down here, if you remember, and also I wanted to hide the end of the thing. So I've used some more of that um, stuff that came out. Um, to uh, tidy it up here and seal in the end and oh look uh, that light board is now blue now it's only one coat um, and the stuff that I've got which is all right for sawn and planed which is quite good um, so the ply is really planed um, and it does say you might need three coats so we'll have to see how we go won't we but uh, it's certainly blending in a bit better isn't it <laughs> I've not done these bits yet. I'll, uh, I'll, I think I'll get some coats on tomorrow, and then while I'm waiting for it to dry, if the weather's up to it, I've done the same down here. So as you can see, I'll squeeze down here for you, uh, and then up this end, I was in a quandary. I didn't quite know. I didn't like how it was left. So this is going to be rather difficult. But I'm hoping you'll be able to see it. I'll be able to see it. Uh, I put a bit of that end bit, you know, the bit that came out, up there. I've done it vertically, um, and obviously I've coated it up. And it just sort of seals that end a bit, doesn't it? So, quite happy with my day's work, I think. Um, I like these little rocking. I only put these down uh, before I start because I didn't want to go in the mud. <laughs> um, but they are a bit rocky, but there we are. Better than nothing. So let's go back out again. We just narrow opening. Reminds me of being up in the loft. Although <laughs> well, it's not that narrow, is it? So um, I did make a poo-poo here. Bit of a bit of a mistake. Um, as you can see, I planted a bit in, but it's still a bit of a gap. Um, just I, I, I sort of went from the wrong end really um, when I cut this. So you know it happens. So all these gaps and that, and all along here which you can already see now because it's blue but I'm going to I'm going to masticate this I think to seal it so uh, there's all my bits that I'm hoping to use for the uh, the patching of these end bits make it look as though it's still in one piece uh, and that's about it everybody um, so I won't be um, I will be working tomorrow but I won't video um, until I've I've never enough finished the shed I think um, and then I'll just show you a little uh, picture of it, a little bit of a video of, of how it's turned out. Alright everybody? So, uh, cheers, and I'll see you whenever I get the rest of it finished. And the weather's turned out quite nice, but as I say, the wind is still pretty cold. Hence, I've still got the woolly on. So I'm going to lock everything up, and then I can go and do some dinner. I'm going to treat myself and have some beef burgers tonight. Yes, so let's beef burgers. So cheers everybody, cheers. Well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back to Robert's train set in the garden. Um, and obviously behind me there and over here 
are the sheds, which is what this video has all been about. Um, so I said at the end of the, uh, the last bit of video um, that I would show you once uh, it's near enough complete really. And I hope you like the, uh, the quick photos of me um, coating it up. Um, certainly made it a lot brighter. Um, you might almost think it's too good to be a shed really, but there we are. <laughs> Whatever. No, I think I'd rather stay indoors. Got my woolly on today. I mean, the sun's out and it's not bad, but it's still pretty breezy. And uh, it's not that warm. It's about seven degrees out here. And obviously um, a bit warmer in the sun, I suppose, but I'm not in the sun, am I? Anyway, um, the time has gone on, to be honest. And today's date is unbelievably the 5th of May. So Wednesday, the 5th of May. And I'm out here <coughs> at half nine. So I've got half an hour before my tea break. And I'm probably going to waffle on a bit. I mean, this has been my longest um, video by a long way, I would think, well over an hour. And uh, I'm going to just carry on. Um, I hope you found it interesting. Um, and at, at the very end of this, you'll see a bit of video I recorded before I'd even started doing it. So you can see that and see what predictions I made. Um, anyway, right, so... Um, the reason it's so late is um, the weather's been awful. Yesterday was 40, 45 mile an hour winds, uh, rain, oh it was horrible. No sun, oh absolutely awful. Um, so I couldn't even get out here to film. I did actually finish doing it um, on the Monday really. Um, although I did do a little bit um, yesterday morning just before it started all taking off but uh, yeah so I'm going to take you off the tripod uh, and wobble you about the garden and uh, just show you where I got to uh, and uh, the culmination of the shed um, saviour I suppose it is because that shed eventually I think would have completely fallen down wouldn't it um, it didn't look too stable and I do thank all my subscribers who said take care and be careful and all that yes um, I think being in, you know, joining her all my life, um, you sort of, you, you hopefully get a little bit of self-preservation. Not always, but a lot of the time. So I'll take you off the tripod now and we'll see how we go. Uh, the thing you might like to see is, is the, um, the outside coating I've used on these sheds. Um, and as you can see, it's a, it's a run seal, um, French life, plus, plus, plus. <laughs> And it's in midnight blue. Now I would say it's not midnight blue. Definitely not. I mean, if I pan up, you can see <laughs> there is no correlation between that blue and that blue on the top. But I must say, it's done what I want. It's very good stuff. Um, and this tub of uh, five litres was about twelve pounds um, from B and Q. Uh, other suppliers are available needless to say um, but what I am having trouble is getting any more now I have got two of these and actually what I, what you'll see is, is just use this one tub so it goes quite well really uh, I must admit I've not coated everything up a couple of coats um, some have had more than two or three actually or four some of them but yeah but yeah it goes quite well so I wouldn't mind doing my fence in this so there we go so let's now uh, have a look and see how we're getting on so as you can see, the shed hasn't really changed much. Um, I mean, you saw this in the photos a bit. If I walk in towards, one thing that is different is I've got a new light here. And I've taken the old halogen light that was up there that wasn't working off. And I won't bother with that anymore. I think this will be far better. Not very bright, but it just gives you a bit of light up here. So that's, I'll show you that how I connected that up inside when I go. You may hear, hear from funny noises from time to time. It's been man day today, so you'll hear them going about, no doubt, and other people. As you can see, I've now made these all um, solid. Um, oh, it goes into shadow down there, doesn't it? And the same over the other side. So they're all uh, looking as though they're the day they were built. So we're now just going out into the back part of the alley behind my garden through the gate 
and this desperately wants cutting as you can see this was what I was intending to do when I came out and then found the shed was half falling down I did my lawn bit, grass, but not out here so this needs doing, probably a bit wet at the moment but I've come out here for a reason because I can't really film what I want to show you from inside, it's too tight so these weren't here when I was showing you before these slats if I go on the flower bed and go down you can see they go all the way down uh, to the top of the ply so what are these here for? in a moment we'll go inside and I'll show you so why you, you may ask am I showing you my hedge in my back garden um, well there's a good reason if you remember along here I put everything along here didn't I but what was here all the time was my ladders my two my one ladder um, in two bits so I'll show you how I've uh, removed it from here so here we are at the end of the shed by the gate out into the back um, alleyway and we've got this back bit here and my ladders have always been on here and when I had the old fence they were hung on the fence posts but I had a new fence put in I didn't do it myself I was, I was still digging out and all that is a bit beyond me at this age so I had a new fence put in by um, local gardening place which are very good um, and did my drive out the front you may have seen so I've actually now got these out here and I'm quite happy how I've done it I had a bit of fence left over that they left for me and I broke that all up and the bits of wood that are got out these posts I've used as you can see I don't know if you can see it but down all the way down so that they're all tied together and then I've just bought some brackets from B&Q heavy duty ones to put the ladder on and they've worked out really well and this is what's left of the fence that I haven't used yet. I'm sure I'll find something to do it with. Uh, maybe a garden railway. No, no, I don't think so. But you can just, you can probably see those slats down there, but it's a bit dark, isn't it? So we're now going indoors, because basically, oh, one last thing. If you remember, I had, uh, the barred board was missing. Well, if I go outside again, I'll show you what I've done. So if you remember, the bit on this side was still on there. Um, but this bit could come completely come off so I've used some of the slats that came out which have been very useful <laughs> to uh, refashion it and cut a bit of a triangle out I know it's not particularly good but uh, it just finishes it off doesn't it and it painted out quite well quite pleased so and I know it's very dark very sorry the sun's in the wrong place so as I'm coming from the gate um, and we're coming towards the little shed I think I'll just show you inside now if you remember it was pretty full wasn't it and now it still is pretty full but at least you can actually get in it and walk to the back which you couldn't do before not without taking a lot of stuff out I'm quite happy. I will have another tidy up and some of this will be going into the uh, the, the refurbed shed shall we say uh, but yeah I'm quite pleased there's the uh, the trusty uh, strut that we had so here we are then let's open this door and see what's going on in here I think the first thing to notice is it is, does look nice and clean, doesn't it? And I'm sorry it's so dark. I'm hoping it will uh, it will uh, react. There we are. So I've not done any much here. Um, I've already painted, uh, as you saw, all all the inside walls. And the major thing was I wanted my bike to be held up properly. Um, I think actually part of the, the shed collapse was what I did with this um, stand I got for it, or prop. And that was just screwed to the outside walls and no way was it strong enough. And the, the weight of the bike, 20 kilos, probably enough to collapse it like it did. So that's what all those struts were outside. I've got corresponding ones inside here. And they are actually slats from a bed <laughs> that uh, isn't used anymore, luckily. So I um, and the doors to the shed are just shut behind me. Ooh. 
and this is all really solid now I actually sat I actually sat on this and this wall did not move so it is solid and I'm quite pleased with that and it's all sitting there ready and if I turn it on and push the walking part of it even about oil goes round it hey still battery in it so hopefully I'll get to use this and it's going to be easier to get in and out because now the top which is now higher up in fact it's just about under that window there uh, is a lot easier, you know a lot out of the way again loads of room we're getting rid of the fridges and uh, the, this will be sorted out in due course but I'm not too worried and I've still got all my drills and that in here because I've got a few little jobs I might still want to do I put this shelf back which I thought was really useful which went back reasonably easily although I didn't bother to cut it all around these slats I just ran it in front of it um, and as you can see I've just done a a beetle job underneath I think uh, I put this bracket here just to stiffen it a bit in the middle because it was a little bit uh, floppy and I've yet to decide whether any of the other shelves or even these bits that I sell which from the fridges will go up I don't know yet I'm gonna leave it at one see how we go I did however get my little um, what's the name here storage thing here and I've been saving my bell with a clanger <laughs> don't know why but there we are uh, interestingly if we go back outside now because we're near enough finished here oh I was going to show you the uh, power so the power comes in here from that little light uh, the black bleed goes down to one of my nice junction boxes with which I've got quite a few and then this was the feed if you can see it that fed the halogen light and it just plugs in down there now you can if you want to be clever uh, and I sometimes am but not very often you can plug in one of these remote wireless uh, switch-ons and then you can turn it on when you're down in the house which I used to do but I don't seem to bother now um, so just go out and we'll finish it almost here I think I think you've seen quite a bit but if you, I don't know how the colour will come out on this camera but there's a the colour of the inside of the door if I swing round that's the colour of the shed outside now and you might say why this is the original colour that the shed was so as you can see it's lighter than the the new colour but not drastically lighter so I'm quite pleased with that I probably will give this a coat of the uh, you know the darker blue at a later date uh, but at the moment it's been inside isn't it so it's not too bad so we're going to shut the door on this shed and I'll swing you around and show the garden again in the sunshine um, and it's sort of you know it's mostly blue with a few clouds but we are due rain later on so we'll see how we go so I hope you enjoyed this and as I said um, I've done a I did a summing up piece before I started so that'll be right at the end of this bit of video and we'll um, I hope you've enjoyed it I hope it might have helped people that might have problems with their shed um, it's a case, I think, of just looking at it logically and thinking the, the easiest and the safest finish, way. Um, perhaps some costs might be useful. So I did tell you about this paint here at £12. I bought a Leyland Matty Molson um, cheaply for inside because it's going to be that good and it's obviously matte. The sheet of... Um, Chinese ply was £32 for the 8 before 4 sheet. The marine ply was £67 for the sheet. The, the suppliers charged me £5 for cutting it up for me. And the other couple of pieces of timber and the screws made a grand total from the suppliers for the timber of £142. And the paint, obviously two of these tubs, but I've only really used one, um, came to about 30 quid I suppose, so it's not bad, so I'm quite pleased. It's a lot cheaper than a new quality shed, isn't it? And if I give you one last piece of advice, <laughs> um, 
with hindsight, if I'd have known the problems that this construction of the shed would cause, I may well have gone for the construction of this shed, which is basically a frame with cladding on the outside. Um, and just to give you an idea, the shed that you can see over the top of my head, not the first one, which is my next door neighbour, the 81 year old, um, which is falling down, but it's still there. My next door neighbour but one shed is exactly the same sort of construction as mine. It's years younger than mine, and it's almost not as quite a bad estate as mine, but it's going the same way. So it just shows that it's not just you're unlucky, it might be the way these are built. I think with these you do need to maintain them a lot more than perhaps I have and he has. <laughs> anyway, so we'll go back again and hopefully the next one will be something about trains, possibly. Something to do with the bits maybe from Hornby that came. We'll see. Cheers everybody. Cheers. So I've rather cheated here as you can see and I've actually filmed the end bit at the same time as I filmed the beginning bit. Um, just because it's all set up and it, it works, doesn't it? And the weather's nice. Um, I think the weather's going to be all right. Um, uh, but we'll see, won't we? So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, got the shed up, back up and running um, with a good bit of paint and that on it. And I'm, you know, I'm pleased that it's looking a lot better. Um, so, uh, yeah. So hopefully the next one will be about trains. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, and thanks for watching Robert's Train Set. And uh, thanks for my subscribers. Cheers, bye.